The North Carolina State Board of Elections announced Monday that filing for a special election will run March 11th through the 15th. Voters in the 9th Congressional District could learn as soon as next Monday who will be officially vying for the seat, which has been left vacant for the past three months in the United States House of Representatives. The board also set the schedule for the 9th District special election with a primary set for May 14th. The general election will be September 10th unless a second primary is needed, in which case the general election will be November 5th. To advance to the general election, a candidate has to secure at least 50% of the vote, so the possibility of a second primary depends on how many Republicans run and how the votes turn out. The special election was called for after the state board launched an investigation into election fraud in Bladen County by McCray Dallas, who was hired by the Mark Harris campaign for get out the vote efforts. Dallas was arrested and charged with three counts of obstruction of justice, two counts of conspiracy to commit obstruction of justice, and two counts of illegal possession of an absentee ballot. This is the first congressional redo since 1974. So far, only one Republican has made a declaration to run. WBTV reports that State Senator Dan Bishop out of Mecklenburg County announced Monday that he will throw his proverbial hat in the ring. Bishop previously served in the State House of Representatives. Several others in the district, including former Governor Pat McCrory and Union County GOP Chairman Dan Barry, have said they will not run. Harris, citing health issues, announced that he would not be running again. State Democratic Party Chairman Wayne Goodwin told the Richmond Observer last week that he did not know of anyone planning to challenge Dan McCready, who unofficially lost to Harris by 905 votes before the investigation. Libertarian Jeff Scott also told the RO that he would be running again. The special election is also open to the Green and Constitution parties, which were recognized by the state last year. The frontman for a band scheduled as one of the top three headlining groups for the inaugural Epicenter Festival has died. Media outlets report that vocalist Keith Flint of The Prodigy was found dead of an apparent suicide Monday in his Essex, England home. Flint joined the electronic band in 1990 as a dancer and was featured as a vocalist on the 1996 single Firestarter. The Epicenter show at Rockingham Dragway was the fifth concert scheduled on the band's 2019 North American tour. It is not yet known if the band will go on to perform or if another band will fill in. The band's website on Monday featured just one page with the following message. Quote, it is with deepest shock and sadness that we can confirm the death of our brother Keith Flynn, who sadly took his own life over the weekend. We thank you for respecting the privacy of all concerned at this time. End quote. Three area gospel groups are coming together this weekend for a benefit concert to help a local fireman. The Eastern Sunrise Quartet and the Cameronian Quartet, both of Rockingham and Second Chance Ministries of Florence, will be singing at the event on Saturday to raise money for Harold Dawkins. Dawkins, a longtime first responder, was diagnosed late last year with Gillian Barre syndrome. According to the Mayo Clinic, Gillian Barre syndrome is a rare disorder in which the body's immune system attacks the nerves. The exact cause of the disorder is still unknown and there is no cure. Dawkins was a firefighter for more than 40 years and began his career with the East Rockingham Fire Department serving as chief from 1983 to 1986, according to a GoFundMe page set up to help cover medical expenses. He retired in 2005 and became a photographer for Cordova Fire and Rescue and later a contributor to FireNews.net and the Richmond Observer. The concert will begin at 6 p.m. on Saturday at Jefferson Park Free Will Baptist Church on Broadway Street in East Rockingham. For more information, call 910-995-8544. To celebrate the start of its second 50 years of operation and anticipation of the upcoming Epicenter Festival, Rockingham Dragway has completed one more phase of a comprehensive upgrade to its infrastructure. Rockingham-based Hudson Paving completely resurfaced the 1 8 mile, two-lane stretch of roadway leading from US-1 to the track offices to provide greater ease of access during the festival and beyond. In anticipation of the arrival of more than 100,000 rock music fans, track owner Steve Earwood already has installed new fencing, upgraded signs, and put new roofs on restrooms and concession buildings throughout the complex. All right, when we return, Kelsey Rushing has your Live at 5 weather report. Any snow? We'll let you know right after the break.
Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts is an occasional shop located at 122 South Hancock Street in Rockingham, North Carolina. We are open the first weekend of each month, Thursday through Saturday. We strive to offer unique selections of vintage, antique, handmade, and new goods. Each month we'll fill the shop with hand-picked home decor, furniture, and gifts. If you are looking for something out of the ordinary, then we're the place for you. You can find the shop dates and hours on our website at willowtreeantiquesandgifts.com. We would love to see you during our next occasional shop dates. At Richmond County Hospice, we strive to provide high quality care to our patients and their families. Whether it's the incredible hospitality at Haven House or from the comfort of your own home, you can count on hospice to be there for you. We also offer monthly grief support groups and our chaplain will be there to hold your hand in prayer. Through our amazing staff and our volunteers, hospice has made difficult times easier for our community. Call the number on your screen if you feel that you or your loved one may benefit from our services. Richmond County Hospice, peace, comfort, dignity. McNair Auto Sales is the place to buy your pre-owned car, truck, or van. To be the best, it takes big selection, friendly staff, and great pricing. We guarantee a no-hassle buying experience, and financing is available right on site. So come see us today. We're located at 1026 East Broad Avenue in Rockingham. And remember, with over 40 years of experience, you know McNair is the name you can trust. Today's Live 5 weather report is brought to you by Henry's, right, literally right across the street from us. But of course, going to the temperatures for tomorrow. Uh, today has been quite cold, but it has been sunny. And tomorrow is going to be pretty much the same. So it's going to be so sunny, but it will be cold with mostly in the 40s. So Fayetteville, high 44, low 24. Lumberton, high 45 with a low 26. Then we have Rayford at high 44 and a low 25. Uh, not too different from Fayetteville. Uh, Larnberg has a high of 45 with a low of 26 and Bennettsville high 45 low of 28 not too different from Larnberg and of course going into areas close to the southern pines it's going to be a little bit colder with a high of 43 and a low of 24 then we have Ellerby high 43 low of 25 Rockham of course which is where we're standing right now high 44 low of 25 and Wadesboro high 44 and low of 26 so it's pretty much going to be Sunny most of the week, uh, but it's Friday it should be raining. And of course, going into the five-day weather forecast, um, Wednesday will be sunny with a high 44, low 25. Thursday will be sunny as well, with the, and it's going to be a little bit warmer with a high 52 and a low of 36. And of course, like I just said, Friday we'll be expecting some rain with a 40% chance of it, with a high of 53 and a low of 40. And of course, Saturday will be cloudy, but the sun will still be there with a high of 63 and a low of 49. So it won't be cold all through the week, but it will be cold, but just slowly getting warmer and warmer. But Sunday does have a 70% chance of rain, so keep that in mind as well, with a high of 67 and a low of 53. So, so far this week, we only have two rainy days, which is good with the rain that we've been, have, been having, so at least it won't be super wet this week. And of course, that's it for your Live 5 weather report. When we return, we got your RO Sports update, and it's coming up right after the break, so stay tuned. I'm Joey Bennett, Director of Call Auditorium, and this is Emily Tucker from the Richmond County Chamber of Commerce, and we're here in the Call Auditorium. We've got a whole new series of shows we're announcing for 2019, and we're very excited about who we're bringing to Richmond County. So, Joey, what do I have to look forward to? We have three fabulous shows that we're so excited about that are going to be right here at Call Auditorium. Scotty McCreary, Craig Morgan, and Hotel California. And where do I go to find these tickets? You call us here at the box office, 910-410-1691, or come by and see us. At Kiyosera, we see your company differently. We see your documents, how they're accessed, what it takes to keep them secure, and how well your workflow is flowing. Kiyosera helps your entire document infrastructure run more efficiently, securely, and cost-effectively. And what we see is an opportunity to integrate all of it.
Back on the court Monday for the second time this spring, the Richmond Senior High School tennis team showed head coach Patrick Hope several improvements from last Thursday's opener. Completing the second half of a home-and-home -home with non-conference opponent Union Pines High School, the Raiders fell by a final score of 9-0. But Hope wasn't discouraged by the score, noting the final numbers don't always tell the whole story. Monday's lineup was the same as last week's first meeting with Richmond's number one Kevin Campos and number two Bradford Pittman squaring off against Sean Rakovsi and Blake De Deaton. For the second straight match, Campos fell to Rakovsi 8-0, but Pittman managed to pick up a point from Thursday's meeting, finishing 8-1. Singles newcomers number three Caleb Brewer and number four Mason Bailey faced Jake Mowbray and Kai Blakely and lost 8-1 and 8-0 respectively. Brewer, like Pittman, managed to improve his score from the first go-around. Rounding out the singles competition were number five Kareem Ojeda and number six Alex Yates, who both lost by a final score of 8-0 to Davis Mowbray and Luke O'Donnell. Doubles action yielded the same results as Thursday, but also saw some improvement on the score sheet. The number one team of Campos and Pittman fell to Rakovsi and Deaton, and the number two pairing of Brewer and Mason lost to Jake Mowbray and Blakely. Both groups were blanked in the first meeting, but each recorded two points Monday, dropping their matches 8-2. The 0-2 Raiders will open Sand Hills Athletic Conference play today at Purnell Sweat High School before closing the week at Pinecrest on Friday at 4 p.m. Be sure to head to richmondobserver.com to find the latest on Raider tennis and all other Raider athletics. And that's going to do it for this edition of Live at 5. Be sure to keep up with all the latest from the RO by going to richmondobserver.com or by downloading the free RO app for your Android and Apple devices. Of course, be sure to tune in to Good Morning Sand Hills Monday through Friday, 6.30 to 8.30 a.m. And catch the RO Sports Show every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. For the Live at 5 crew, I'm Matt Harrelson. Have a great night, Richmond County.